I'm always looking out for clients who have an issue that tells a very clear story. And this, it was a great example. This house is from 1990s. Um, so not built, you know, when we had blower door testing required or HVAC design calculations required. And they have since done, you know, the past owners, renovations and additions and remediations and whatever to it. And of course, that kind of thing, especially when you started with something that didn't have any calculations or math going into it, we don't really know where we're at right now. And so I want to show you this very, very interesting uh, example of something that I've heard from a lot of people, but this was the clearest version of this. So we opened up a basement wall. This is on the stairwell. You notice that on this little shelf down here, there were some cans and things sitting, little bags of whatever. And he noticed that underneath one of them, there were some brown spots. And he thought, uh-oh, that's not good. And he picked it up and it looked like there was some mold that was like leading back behind the, the drywall. So he pulled off some of the drywall or used a moisture meter first, I believe, and, and tested the drywall, tested the wood that then he exposed, and all of it was soaking wet. So when he opened up the wall, what he found was this. This is the kind of wall assembly that you'll see in very northern places or with people who have a lot of experience building in very northern places before we had a lot of building science know-how. Plastic generally does not belong in any of the homes that I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis because most places in the United States of America and in the world have two seasons. We've got winter and we've also got summer. And the problem with plastic is that it's supposed to go on the warm side of the assembly. And so no matter where you put it, it's in the wrong place half the time because we've got winter and summer. So what's happening is in the summertime, we've got uh, moisture getting into this wall and then condensing on the backside of this plastic and then mold is able to grow there. So of course he pulled this out, uh, took off the plastic, which looked like this, by the way. So this is pretty gross in there and it was just brown and yucky. So obviously needs to go. Threw that away ended up looking at the backside of the drywall. Backside of the drywall doesn't look very wet. I mean, like that's, it doesn't look beautiful and pristine, but that's not nearly as bad as what we saw here. And so now the question is, what do we do about this? And the clue about all of this is in the next photo that I'll show you. But what I wanna say first is that it's not true that basements are damp. That's not always the case. In fact, in the summertime when we're, we've, cooling air with air conditioning. And this place has a very nice HVAC system that's been upgraded. The, the previous owner got upsold on some like higher efficiency equipment, sealed combustion furnace, nice uh, big air conditioning evaporator coil, four tons of air conditioning. And it's like not as bad as 500 square feet per ton, but it, of course it wasn't calculated. Once we've got all this dry, how do we put this back together uh, without falling into the myth of, oh, basements are wet places, and so we need to make sure to add the, the plastic back in here. I would not add the plastic back in here. The quotes that he's gotten in the middle of the country here in Kansas, where this house is located, was to uh, blow in insulation into this cavity, because of course he pulled out the bats that go up, and the bats didn't look nearly as bad as these. So low on the wall, where, the, where they were bordering the basement, they looked like this. Once he pulled them out, the top of them were all fine. So what are, we, what are we doing about this? We're gonna blow insulation on the whole thing. We're gonna use spray foam. What are we, what are, what's the deal? Um, he doesn't really wanna do spray foam because he wants to be able to see for termites. And so now this is the, the issue. Now the clue came when he replasticed over this just temporarily, just because like he didn't know what else to do. And this is what happens every time the HVAC turns on. He showed me around, there's one supply in the basement so it's a conditioned basement. It is finished, mostly. Um, of course, basements have very low load, both in heating and in cooling, because all the cool air sinks down there, and in the wintertime, it's insulated against outside. There's really no exposure. It's not a walkout. Uh, we don't have very many windows, if any. So it's not really losing a lot of heat either. So the issue here is that we've got this one supply, and then we've got no returns. But clearly, this picture tells us different. The return ducting on this happens to be what's called panned. And that means that we're using building cavities like these to draw air down the walls and through the floors and back into the HVAC equipment. And that ductwork is not sealed at all. And so when the HVAC kicks on, it pulls on the closest place that it can possibly get it, which is before the filter, 
then it pulls right after the filter, then it pulls further down the line and further down and further down. And it, it would much rather get the air from the basement if it can get it through gaps and cracks than pull all the way from the grill at the far end, which is inside of a bedroom somewhere else in the house. Then we're pulling more air from the basement than we're giving to it, at which point this happens. And you could also, like he described, the basement door slamming shut when the HVAC is on. He said, interestingly, when the HVAC is off, this doesn't happen. And also when I open the basement door, it doesn't look like this either. It relieves the pressure. By the way, one other real interesting tidbit. He was like, oh, by the way, in case this matters, I, on my sealed combustion furnace, I was having condensation build up on the inside of the furnace cabinet. So there's two PVC pipes, one going to outside, one coming from outside. The one that's coming from outside was getting uh, mold on it. On the inside, it was dripping into the, the cabinet. So he disconnected that. He was like, what's happening, I think, is that cold air from the air conditioner is going up and into that thing and causing condensation. It's actually the opposite. What's happening is that the, because the basement is depressurized, we're pulling here, and we're also pulling down that pipe, that PVC pipe, and into the furnace cabinet. And what we then looked for is places on the furnace cabinet that were unsealed. And of course, we found several of those where there's punch outs for the gas coming in or for the wiring coming in, wide open holes. And so that exact same thing as what's shown in this picture was happening on the furnace side. So the answer there is let's seal those up. Let's also relieve the pressure in the basement. And so the answer here, the easiest answer is we've got basically a balloon, which is the house, and we've built this squeezed part into it. So now we've got one part of the balloon being really tight and huge, and the other part being kind of small and relaxed. That's what the basement door is doing. So the easiest thing here is to just replace the door with a louvered door. So if he's gonna make a decision today, it wouldn't be to do what was first suggested among many other solutions, which he had a hard time parsing through, of just cutting a grill into the basement door or putting a, a grill in the ceiling over the basement door. Because you'd have to calculate and figure out how big that grill needs to be. And we don't know how big the grill needs to be so just replacing the whole door with a louver door or just leaving the door open, he has little kids, so he can't do that, would be the answer. That will relieve the pressure. And at that point, this will stop happening. And we won't be drawing this moist air into the wall and having it convince on the backside of, the, of anything. In fact, the basement should be, all things being equal, a pressurized zone in the summertime. And in the wintertime, when we flip and now warm air is going up, based on sac effect, basement does become depressurized in the house, but the air that we're pulling in in the winter is cold and dry. Even when it's snowing outside, that air is very dry when you bring it up to the temperature. So understanding how pressures are working in your house is really important because most of the professionals that you're gonna hire to come into the house to look at this and suggest fixes are not gonna do any pressure testing at all. And they, in fact, don't even think about pressures in homes. So I hope that this has been helpful for you. I hope it, it solves somebody's problem out there. Uh, comment below if you have other things to add. Tune in next time.